In this video, I'm going to try and provide you with a few ways you can um, keep the joist from sagging after you've raised it up. Ain't no purpose in uh, raising the joist if you can't actually solve the problem. And uh, if you're not familiar with how to use blocks and jacks to raise the joist, I'll put a link in the video here so that you can uh, go back and watch that. That would basically be part one. This would be part two. And there's possibly going to be a part three or more parts depending upon how far I'm going to take this thing because there are a variety of different ways. So after you jack the joist up, the floor joist up that is sagging, and you get it about where you want it, you can simply add another joist to it. And if possible, uh, put the crown up on the joist um, to give you an idea what, what I mean by the crown up. When the joist is sagging, the crown would be down on the sagging board. Um, you'd basically want to put the new board in if it does have a crown in it. Um, you'd want to have it up. You don't want to have a, a sag in the board already. And if you need a little more information on that, I can always make another video. And maybe I'll be able to explain it uh, at the end of this video, give you a better idea. So this is one way. Nail it uh, 16 inches on center staggered. So that would be 16 inches on center. And then you would move it over uh, you'd, uh, maybe about uh, an inch away from the bottom, inch and a half away from the bottom. And then on the top, you would just uh, move the uh, row over eight inches and then start 16 inches on center so that they would basically give you a pattern like this. One here, one here, one here, one here, one here, going down the length of the joist. So this is one way to do it. You could always go with a larger board. If you have two by six floor joists, you could always go with a four by six if you need a little more strength. Now, here's something you're going to need to consider too is what these sagging joists are actually sitting on. If the sagging joists are sitting on sagging beams or sagging um, building foundations, then you're going to need to uh, raise the ends of that and the foundation. And, and again, these might be damaged and need to be replaced. And the same thing with a beam. If you have a sagging beam, then uh, you're not going to want to do this. You're not going to want to. The beam would need to be replaced um, if it if it is sagging because that what might mean that it's undersized. And if that's the case, you might need a larger beam, and that would be a good time to contact a structural engineer. And I know you hear me saying that a lot. Hey, contact a structural engineer. Well, I can only give you advice on how to make the repairs. I can't give you all the advice you need all the time. So keep that in mind. I can't provide you with uh, lumber sizes or concrete foundation sizes if uh, if your home is damaged. You're going to need to get that information from, from someone else. Here's another method. You can always add one joist to each side of the damaged joist. And, uh, and then of course you, if, if you have a lap, if you have a lap like this, you would need to make sure that you cut it to where it uh, both boards are sitting half on the beam. And I believe there's a one inch minimum uh, or an inch and a quarter. But let's just say it's an inch and a half. You're not allowed. You've got to have these joists um, sitting on a beam or sitting on the sill plate at least an inch and a half. Let's go with that for, for to be safe. Now, if you have a joist that's got a big sag in it and you got a whole bunch of them in here, then you might need to cut the joist. And I definitely don't recommend cutting all the joists at once. It's something you're going to have to do maybe one or two at a time, maybe three at a time, um, if there's no weight on the floor up here. So if this was just an open living room above, you could work with that as long as there aren't people walking around and uh, a lot of large furniture. Make sure that the floor is cleared and that nobody goes in there. This you can actually cut the joist in the middle depending upon how bad it is. You might need to cut it into thirds or quarters depending on how bad it is sagging and then simply add another joist to it and then nail it to that. And the reason why you're nailing the joist 
to the other joist is so that the floor sheathing, which is nailed, is um, still connected and still working, uh, providing you with a little structural engineering uh, or a little uh, structural strength, I should say. So that's the reason why you're nailing the boards together because in reality, uh, if you don't have a lot of weight up there um, or if you're doing a, a big remodel, it might be better to pull all of the nails out of the sheathing or remove the sheathing and then replace the joists and get uh, and get the floor. That could always be another option, depending on how much money you're willing to spend and uh, how much time you have. Last but not least, remember that these methods will not work for every particular situation and might not work for you. They are only examples or suggestions. If you have a floor that's badly damaged, uh, again, you might need to contact a professional uh, to uh, find out why. I mean, there are a variety of different reasons why floors sag. And if you don't figure out why they are sagging in the first place and just fix this thing, there's a good chance it will continue to sag uh, or even get worse. So uh, keep that in mind. And again, I'm going to make a few more videos on this. Um, to uh, give you a better idea of what causes the problems and how to how to fix them. So again, you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible. Go to the website for more videos on walls and engineering. I will also have a complete list of the videos in this series along with other videos that I, I have already made video.gregvan.com structural engineering or go to the gregvan.com website any one of them and look for the video box in the upper left hand corner once you get to the video website click on the structural engineering link and you should be good to go you should be where you need to be